Hello, brothers and sisters. Michael, humble seeker of truth for rapture at the last day. Last video, we saw Father has patterned in 11, 18, 22 into the Song of Moses. And uh, we're going to add to that just a bit and see something just gorgeous. As we do, I want to review this quick. Feast of Tabernacles. So, many have uh, suggested that the calendar had it a month early, the fall feast. Uh, I tend to agree with that, just for how things have fallen. Um, so, on 11, or on 1027, October 27th, they saw the new moon in Jerusalem. That would make it Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets. That would make the Day of Atonement beginning 11-9, in the evening of 11-9 to the evening of 11-10. It just happens the moon was exactly under the water, cleansing water of Aquarius on Judgment Day, the Day of Atonement. Okay, moon can be looked at as the bride or as the man-child, depending which figure you're focusing on. Um, but uh, So that's exactly on cue, and then uh, the bride would... Uh, in a Jewish wedding, go through a, uh, a cleansing, if you will, four days prior to the wedding. And interestingly, then 11-8, four days later, was the blood moon. Bride, innocent, washed clean in the blood of the lamb. Okay, so things falling on that calendar. It makes the Feast of Tabernacles, then, begin on 11-10, is day one, through... 11.16 would be the seventh day of tabernacles. 11.17 is then the eighth day, which is referred to as the last great day of the feast. We're going to look at a couple things that establish that for us. And uh, so it is its own day, and yet it's still part of tabernacles. It represents new beginning. Father's all about full circle. The beginning becomes the end, becomes the next beginning. And so then 11.18 would be the day after. And uh, that's Simchat Torah, where they finished the Torah reading for the year and began the next year again, uh, a new beginning, or and becomes the new beginning. So we're focusing right here. We're at the 16th right now. We're considering uh, rapture uh, any minute, and um, we're going to keep considering it until... He's either here or we're past that. So, we saw in the Song of Moses a staple in the Word of God that uh, as we go through the Scripture, and last video covers this, I suggest you go back and watch it if you want to understand this pattern and the exactness of it. But we get to uh, verse number 5783 in the Bible is Deuteronomy 32.24. It would represent 2022, okay, so pins both years, Gregorian and Jewish year, and then has this 322, which 1118 is the 322nd day of the year, four is Jesus Christ is coming. It could be that plus four days. I, I don't know. Uh, we are pondering the Lord's arrival, and we're doing as we've been instructed. We're watching for the Lord. Okay, so uh, this is amazing. It's the 5,783rd verse in the Bible, and we are in Hebrew year 5783. Thus, it pins uh, exactly 1118. Okay, how do I know that that's verse number 5,783? Somebody asked, what, did I count them? Yes, I did count them three times to make sure. And also there's uh, apps that you can go in and get KGV Bible statistics. And uh, you can check it against that, which I also did. As we ponder the, that last great day, how do we know that it's talking about tabernacles or a feast? We're going to look at that. But I want, as we gain wisdom regarding it, I want you to see how it ties to this Song of Moses. Thus, 
going back and you can do it after this video if you're so inclined but seeing the last video the last two actually um, will get quite interesting for you I would think so we read through the Song of Moses and we get down to verse 43 rejoice you rejoice O you nations with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render re vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun, or Joshua, the son of Nun. Nun actually is a uh, also a letter in Hebrew its value is 50 and it means offspring or heirs but uh, another conversation verse 45 and Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel okay we're gonna ponder that in a minute let's go to uh, so this thing with tabernacles it ties to them going into the promised land and they didn't go the false report or bad reports uh, they listened to them instead of uh, to the good reports and they didn't go in when they were supposed to and then they went in when they weren't and God didn't go before them and they got waylaid then they ended up out in the desert for 40 years living in booths and that's uh, the Feast of Tabernacles is also called the Feast of Booths uh, because um, they or Sukkot because they they are to stay in booths and it reflects on that time well the promise to Israel was to go into the promised land and so the the end of tabernacles then we we see a transition of okay we're we're coming out of the booths now where we remembered that we didn't go in when we were supposed to but we remember that Almighty God has promised that we will go into the promised land. Let's go to Leviticus 23. There's one huge, huge thing I'm going to get to. If uh, some of this isn't understandable or uh, I make it confusing... Don't worry about it. You're going to have one huge diamond at the end, if nothing else. But um, hopefully you get a lot more than that. All right, Leviticus 23, and we're going to go to verse 36. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And you shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon this day, upon his day. So the culmination of the feast throughout the year is the Feast of Tabernacles. The culmination of that is the eighth day Shemini Atzeret it does represent the end becoming the next beginning but specifically it, it represents a, a moving into the promised land and the dead being alive again the culmination of the promises besides the Sabbath verse 38 of the Lord and besides your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Interestingly, uh, Amos 8, Amos, what do you see? A uh, basket of summer fruit, oh, thou hast well seen and the end has come upon my people Israel, verse 8 2, going into 8 3. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of, of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, 
and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Verse 41. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year, and it shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths. Watch this. You know, there's not that much written about the eighth day. But this, I believe, is gigantic to see and understand. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I am made. Oh, sorry, you shall dwell in booths, not eight days, seven days. Should dwell, it's an eight day feast, but that eighth day stands alone, but he doesn't tell him to stay in the booth the eighth day. To me, that screams a transition or signifying, figuring a transition of going into the promised land. Okay, and we, uh, when we understand the Feast of Tabernacles has everything to do with their time out in the desert, living in booths, which culminated in going into the promised land. But there is the true promised land, and that's what we're considering. or spiritual promised land. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I have made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. Okay. Let's go to John 6. Oh, I can't wait to show you this. John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. See, that's not talking about the end of the millennial reign because we're talking about the culmination of the promise to Israel that he would raise them up and they would uh, dwell in the promised land. Now, there's different time points. This becomes a reality, reality because we have a multiple part gathering. 99 sheep bride of Christ. But he wanted them all to be 99 sheep. He didn't want to have to put them through Jacob's trouble, but they didn't listen. This is the culmination of the promise. Thank God that after he does it for the 99 sheep, he still does it at the last trumpet for the lost sheep. But that's before the millennial reign too. This is talking about the last great day of the feast. Keep your finger here once. Look, let's look at uh, Nehemiah 8. I forgot to go there. Mm, where is it? Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah. 8, 18. Also day by day. Now let's go to 13. And on the second day, we're gathered... Together, the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests, the Levites, and Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and f fetch olive branches, pine branches, myrtle branches, palm branches, and branches of thick trees to make booths, as it is written. 
So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the children and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths, and said unto the booths, For since the days of Jeshua the son of Nun, we just read about him, didn't we? At the Song of Moses, at the end of it, he was one proclaiming it. For since the days of Jeshua the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so, and there was very great gladness. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. So, the last great day is the last day of the last feast. It is the eighth day. I like when my phone uh, does this little confirmation sounds, if you will. Okay, 640. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 44, no man can come into me, can come to me, except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, it'd be really nice if he tied it directly to the feast. I mean, Father, could you say feast with it? So the people that, you know, wonder in their mind, well, are, are you sure? it's a, Maybe it's talking about something else, like the last day of this or that or are you sure it's tied to a feast? Yes. John 7, 37. And we know this is an ordered communication, don't we? And our Father stamps everything. Let's read the verse. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Thank you, Father. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst... Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. <clears throat> Eleven seventeen twenty two, as we looked at. Feast of, or Tishri, one, uh, Feast of Trumpets, beginning, the new moon sighted on 1027. And then we looked at that at the beginning of this video. Putting the last great day of the feast, the eighth day, 11, 17, 22. That's the two, 321st day of the year on the Gregorian calendar. John 737. In the last day, that great day of the feast. That is the 321st verse of John. Stamping 1117. It's page 888 in my Bible, which happens to be Gematria for Jesus. I think that is just absolutely gorgeous. Strong's number 321 is to lead up, to bring up, to rapture up, if you will. 1118, that Simchat Torah. So they're talking about reading the law. Well, the next day they complete those Torah readings and they begin the next year. And we looked at this uh, the last couple videos. So just want to point this out. 
This is uh, 626 days from March 2nd, 2021, when he told me to warn the world judgment was falling on the earth. Number 626 is a gathering or collecting, collection, uh, a gathering, okay. Interesting, the scepter, scepter is 7626. And I bring this up again because I added this little note right here. The last great day of the feast. English Gematria, not simple English, but English Gematria is 1626. One is Father and 626. Tied to this date. If this video, uh, well, the last two really adds to this, or this to them. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to his son, Jesus the Christ. Blessings to you. Our Lord is coming. What if he doesn't come? Somebody asked me, what are you going to do in January when he doesn't get here? I thought to myself, what are you going to do if he does? What are you going to say when he doesn't get here, or if he doesn't get here? <laughs> I'm going to say I was watching for the Lord. So when he does get here, I was watching for the Lord. I don't know the day and hour. Even if I do, I don't know that I do. But our Lord is coming. He's made that extremely clear. And our Father continues to lead putting signposts, stamping everything. Just, wow. I hope you're watching for the Lord. He is coming. So is the flood. 